What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another standard thing on the internet. And uh, today, this is a deck by uh, JVS, otherwise known as Josh. And uh, he he sent us a Sultai list probably about a month ago. Uh, he's one of my patrons. And this is like a completely different list. This is more Muldrotha. This is affectionately known as Muldrotha Value Town. And uh, it's got some very interesting inclusions. One of my one of my initial observations is that there are three thrashing Brontodons and only nine sources of green mana in this deck. So this is pretty ambitious. I think people just want to just want to jam these these Brontodons in all of their decks that have green in them, not accounting for the fact that two green is not the easiest thing to get here. Um, but um, other than that. Also, other interesting inclusion is Bane Whip Punisher. I made the I made the point to, to Josh that uh, you're an interesting inclusion. That's a that's fair. That's a that's a good point. Solid solid point. Had not considered that. I made the uh, I, I I asked the question is as to whether two more Ravenous Chupacabras would just be better than two Bane Whip Punishers. And Josh said uh, Punisher is worse than Chupacabra a fair amount of the time. However, there are a few cases where it's better. Uh, sometimes it's better against X ones like Bomite Courier, Siphoner, Earthshaker, and Branch Walker that don't hit a land, or that do hit a land rather. Uh, being able to remove those things on three instead of four is pretty relevant, especially the Courier and Siphoner since it's a nice card advantage. Later, it's an insane combo with Muldrotha, so you can go like play one, kill something, Muldrotha play it again, kill something else, which is pretty cool. Um, and the fact that it goes to the graveyard means you can cast it over and over with Muldrotha, which is nice. Um, and to be fair, like. It is. They're both four mana. They're both two colorless and do, two black to do their effect. One of them happens to stick around. One of them doesn't. So, <laughs> yeah. In fact, doesn't wish he doesn't lift himself up. He pushes the whole world down. Maybe that's true. I can't tell if that's Chuck Norris reference or a Bill Brasky reference from Saturday Night Live. Uh, it's sometimes relevant against Hazaret, Scrap Heap, Scrounger, Rekindling Phoenix, and other recurring threats just by making them smaller instead of killing them. Making Scrappy unable to grow hard of caring by itself is oddly important at times, for example. These are both, these are all points. These are all valid points. The question is whether that's good enough. And uh, that's some, sometimes hard to hard to see on the face of things. Um, to a Razka Relic, also interesting. I think um, one thing that, that I've been noticing with these, with these, uh, these commissions and things is that a lot of times, and I'm, I'm definitely guilty of it, which is, which is why I think people, um, associate me with it or you know send me send me decks send me the decks that have these these attributes in them but a lot of times i worry that people are trying to do things that are too cute uh rather than things that are just better right like i think the bane of punisher is cuter than ravenous chupacabra um and i'm not sure if it's better right so i mean i think that's worth exploring i don't never i don't necessarily think there's a um a cut and dry answer for it right like and, and I don't think anyone's ever tested. Like, that's the other thing. Like, you look at a card like Bane Will Punisher, and this is probably a, a card that no one's ever actually put in a deck. No one's ever put this in a deck and been like, I'm going to play this and see if it's any good. See if it's better than this card. So, um, that's, that's one of the interesting things you get to find out. Because I think one thing that I've always tried to do is give cards that don't have a chance a chance. Because I don't think people do. I don't think people anyone. I mean, it's like this is an e like again, like a Rascal Relic is an easily dismissible card in stand in a constructed format. You look at this and you're like, nope, because previous cards uh, for three mana, like Coalition Relic or Chromatic Lantern stuff like that, um, were just better, right? So you look at a card like this and you're like, it doesn't meet the line, the bar uh, that I'm used to for a card like this, so it's automatically dismissed, and uh, that doesn't take into account the fact that formats are are completely different or contexts are completely different, so. Let's see what happens. My god, I'm out of play points again. And by again, I mean still. So, dang it, I was too late. I was too slow. I'm always surprised the death match she doesn't see more play in blacklists. I think she's she's seeing a ton of play. Like there's uh there's like 3x copies in a lot of the mono blacklists, so Sultai Raisins. Uh, it's actually Sultai Craisins today, my friends. 
These were BOGO at Publix, so I was like, yeah, okay. And then I looked at the ingredients, and the first ingredient is cranberries. That's good. That's what you want in some craisins. Second ingredient is cane sugar, and I was like, why are you adding sugar to these? They're, they're cranberries. And then I got really discouraged. And then there was a reduced one. There was like a 50% reduced sugar, and I was like, oh, that seems better. Um, but they were not on sale, so I was like, dang it. Dang it. And that's the story of um, my dried fruit experience. Cranberries are sour. sour. I guess that's true. They do. Have, they are very tart. What up, Denmark? As we've established, calling you. Man, we missed this one match. Now we gotta wait for like five minutes. I wish I could somehow edit this Thank out you. so that uh, it wouldn't be in the videos. Zagon, thank you so much for the sub. Welcome back. Five months in a row. Really appreciate it. Preach, as the kids say. Well, raisins, yeah. Raisins do have a ton of sugar naturally because of the, uh, you know, because they're grapes, right? Grapes are naturally sweet. But cranberries have to have some amount of sugar, right? I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they're actually inedible if they are, uh, if they're not natural, if they're not unnaturally sweetened. It is cane sugar, I guess. So, you know, small victories, but... Spaghetti Toucher, thank you so much. Best three months of my life. Wow. I'm so glad I could give this to you. I'm glad we could share these three months together. Sugar is sugar. That's probably true. I mean, the, the differences between different types of sugar are probably so negligible that... Oh, look at this. Look at this. This is actually pretty good. I will keep that. This comes into play tapped, though, which is unfortunate. So we can't actually go forest into unbridled growth on turn one and, and have a turn two play. And we can't go evolving wild. Like, so here's the problem. We have Thrashing Brawn on and Gifted Aetherborn. Thank you. So this is actually a, a, a tricky situation. The Saltorius, thank you so much for the sub. Really appreciate it. Oh, this guy's going to be a longtime YouTube fan. Dylan, if you're watching this, you've seen this already. <laughs> Dylan, the, the Saltor pilot, pilot Eater on YouTube. Stop watching. You've already seen this. You were here. Now when your grandkids ask you, where were you when Frank played Muldrotha Value Town on YouTube, on, on Twitch, you'll know. We could get a black here. I think it's a swamp here. Forest into growth doesn't give us search on turn two, though, because we don't have a second land that comes into play untapped. So I'm probably just going to Evolving Wilds for a black so we can either one on turn two. And then we can go Unbridled Growth and Search on turn three. So let's do that. Yeah, it's not fertile. It's not fertile at ground. <laughs> Oh, that's gas. Man, just, I just want to get my land. And pass it. Actually, speaking of a fertile ground, got this guy from Battle Bond. This is one of the rare ones, I think. Can you zoom? There we go. There we go. Got that little fertile ground. This is a. I guess this is a misprint. I don't know. Hard to, hard to tell. It doesn't look like the other ones, but yeah, it's fertile ground nonetheless. Sriracha pretzels are pretty all right. Boom. 
Boom, boom. I wish this was a fertile ground. That'd be sick, because then we could go next turn Chupacabra. I'll give him I'll give him a U2 back. Oh, Gideon. I see. Well, that's unfortunate. Scrollmonger, what is the problem that has gone on for far too long? Wow, what even is this? That's amazing. <laughs> oh my god. That's the most incredible thing I've ever seen. Well, we're not going to block here because that doesn't seem good. How is this a real thing? This is the most amazing thing I've ever seen. So for those of you who are watching on YouTube, I don't know why it opened with Windows, but this is what this is what was uh what was shown off here. Just to be clear, it's my stream calendar that you can find on on my Twitch profile. And it all, it, yeah, it's just indicating that every day is Chicken Sunday, so Hmm. Well. We're going to do one of these jobbies. And I guess we're searching here. But boy, is it... I feel like we're kind of behind here, but I guess we have Ravenous Chupacabra next turn. Is it safe to listen to me as I drive to work? I can't imagine how it wouldn't be. Oh my god, I was at the deli. I was at the deli, the fried chicken we kept running out yesterday. One of my coworkers was, yeah, it's like, it's chicken Sunday." I laughed like an idiot and awkwardly tried to explain why I found it so funny. 55-year-old Sandy doesn't understand Twitch. <laughs> oh lord. Just the best. That's hilarious. I would have been like, Sandy, you have no idea. I'd be like, that's every day, Sandy. And she'll be like, I don't know what that... No, it's not. It's just today. It's just Sunday. All right. Don't be a land. I'm waiting. Um, That's not bad. So it's probably less safe to uh, to type into the Twitch chat while you're driving than it is to actually listen while you're driving. So if you're doing one of those two things, watching, listening on Twitch or responding in the actual chat on Twitch, um, the listening part is probably not the one you should worry about. I think it would be the other one. Well, I guess we're going to Chupacabra here. Like you do. Um, yeah, but, 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 but. So this guy's an artificer. Like, I don't think we care about this. We can just block here. Um, whereas the the knight, the vigilant knights are just better on the following turn. So I'm actually just gonna kill the knight. Plus, if they ever want to use that chupacabra, I haven't left yet. About to have the next ten minutes. Okay. Okay, good. We're we're on the, we're on we're on safe we're in safety town then. That's good. I was like, stop, because especially because you had the typo, so I was like, oh no, he's driving and typing at the same time. This is not going to end well. Oh, either board and negate seemed better to be honest. Oh well. Excuse me, Robert. When I need your F and M top eight guidance, I'll be sure to ask for it, buddy. Got him. Uh, got him. Knight of Malicio. Uh, 
Oh my god, how many gifted other ones are we going to have? This one's can go in the graveyard. That was actually a good draw, because now we have to take damage here. We can go black, black. Um, so I get to sack this to draw a card. That seems pretty good. We're doing good on colors here. But I might just want to play Bronto Dawn and Gifted Aetherborn, actually. Hmm. Hmm. Green, green, black, black. We gotta... We can keep Negate up. They have no cards in hand. That's probably better. So green, green, one. And black, black, Aetherborn. You like how I say Bronto Dawn? Is that what? Why? Explain it to me. No attacks, cause that's not how magic works. Oh, I was saying Bronto. I can play big, big bronze. I don't feel like we're in terrible shape here, so that's good. I like not being in terrible shape. Maybe I should play 30 lands in here. I feel like I'm I'm woefully under underlanded here. Also, we could just call it Sultai Lands at that point. 26 lands, basically 20 basically lands. It's basically Sultai Lands at this point. Oh, Gideon's getting big, huh? All right. I appreciate that. So they can make their walking ballista larger as well. Okay. Okay. Excuse me. So one thing they can do is uh, if they can pump this guy and then go shoot, sh if we double block here for seven toughness, they can go shoot, shoot, and then kill both of the first strike, which is pretty obnoxious. <sighs> pretty sure we're blocking here. This is four, four. So this is nine. 10, 11, and then we gain two, so we go to two. They have one card in hand. God, why is Gideon indestructible? That's problematic. One misclick buck did not mean to donate. Big, how is that even possible? You really got to follow through to to type all that. That didn't even make any sense. Either way, thank you, sir. Appreciate it. I don't think this is beatable here. I think this might be better. If they want to go pump, pump, shoot, shoot, that's fine because it still dies. So we take nine still, but we gain four. This is actually fine. You get to kill both of these if you want with the walking ballista, but then we don't have to worry about walking ballista ever again. And we get to stay at six. It's funny because you can still cancel the donation up until the point we we're entering the message. It's not like the, it's the donation's locked in and then they're like, you've already donated. Please enter a message if you'd like. And I'm like, oh, dang, it's too late now. At least I think so. What do I know? Let's stay at six. Seems good. Yeah, so they can pump this guy and then shoot this twice if they want, but as long as you didn't top deck another, uh, another thing, I think that's what they're going to do. Yeah, that seems good.
Look at all these things we got rid of. Look at all these gifted aether ones in the graveyard. Can we just draw one scarab god here? We got two. We got two two tra two chances. That's not it. That's not it either. All right. Well, actually, we have three chances. Boom. That's not. That's not it. But it's another chance. So we get to keep trying. Or we can just kill this guy, which seems also pretty good. It's not working. How do I cancel Big Fan? <laughs> oh man. I'm going to I'm going to contend that uh, my audience is funnier than I am sometimes and I have you all fooled. That's actually pretty hilarious. Killing this guy doesn't do much, which is unfortunate. I'm just going to cycle this dude. Hey, look at that. Look at old Baney. Baney McWhippersnapperson. All right, so we're just going to go one, two, three. This is very interesting here. We're going to put a counter on you. At least we were able to cast the dinosaur. You're not wrong. Like, we're just giving them an opening with the negate. So we're hoping they don't hit. We're just, don't don't play a spell, that's all. If they play History of Banalia, it's going to be very sad. Also, it's nice not having drawn this next turn. Because we really need to find an answer to this idiot. Gideon's surprisingly hard to deal with. Actually, we can just block and, and, and trade here. That's pretty good. You don't think her name is Baney McWhipperson? That's what I would. That's what my name would be. It's like John Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt. His name is my name too, guys. I think you need to. You need to know that about me. Are you gonna, they're going to do something in the block step? Wow, that's rude. Scarab God. Scrabble God. Yes. And we get to keep the gate up. Oh, heavens to Betsy. Boy, I tell you what. I'm going to pay one less because um, I don't want to. All right, so now we have Ravenous Chupacabra, Triple Gifted Aetherborn, Thrashing Brontanon, and Banewood Punisher to get back. Is search meant to flip? Muldrow to only cast permanence, right? Yeah, but what is... I mean, wait, what? How does... I don't understand the, the connection there. What are you saying? What are you saying right now? That's fine. I could care less about that guy. Did you hear what I said? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Land. Now we want to land because then we can... We can double dude. And now I can actually want to... I kind of want to like try to hit a land here. One, two, three, four... Let's get a gifted Aetherborn back. I guess we'll activate him. Oh, we can get one of your things back too? Wait, what? Oh god, Scarab God is so powerful. I actually forgot you can get opponent's creatures back. I don't know how I forgot that. I think it's because I haven't played with Scarab God in, in, a, in, a, in a short while. Um, no, you can go to the bottom. I just want to be able to activate again. Oh, dang it, land. Fashionably late to the land party. Search can find non-creature cards, right? Non-creature, non-land. Those are permanents. They have no cards in hand. We have active Scarab God and Negate in hand. Okay. Well, that feels good. Um, Let's get another one back. John Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt. His name is my name. Two. Um, I don't think I want either of these. Bottom. Maybe I'll keep this. Doesn't matter. Draw it, sure. It's pretty academic at this point. Do I just go to your face? No, we have to get rid of the Gideon. 
because that thing's problematic. I should have filled my drink before the stream. Mistakes were made. Oh, we just win the game. Thanks, Scarab God. Preach. Uh, Yehenny's expert seem, expertise seems good against this deck. So does Vraska's Contempt. Brontodon seems... I don't know. I don't really want Brontodon. I don't want to be paying three mana. and I don't want to pay four mana to get rid of a History of Benalia, especially when they've already gotten a 2-2 out of it. That just feels bad. I don't know if I love Walking Ballista here either. I would rather play Expertise, Vraska's, Negates. I like this. I think this seems fine. Not a big Doomfall fan because they will have... Um... No, yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah, it's our uh, Denmark, rather. It's, uh, yeah, you can reveal a non-creature and non-land. So you can hit permanence. You can hit pretty much anything in the deck. You can hit creature. Uh, no, not, not creatures. <laughs> you can hit pretty much anything that's not creatures, rather. So Unbridled Growth, Fatal Push, Negate, Search for... other uh, Future Search for Azkantas, Razka Relic, what have you, so... I actually don't know how they get post board. I have no idea what this deck does. His name is my name, too. Hey, remember that time I had the John Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt? Is the relic good? I don't know. We just this is our first match in the first game with this deck. We'll take it out if it's not good. Black white vehicles, I guess we Lily of the Veils, Bobs, Bobs, sinkholes and moats. <laughs> I can't tell if you're referencing standard uh, corollaries to those cards or if you're actually just making jokes. You got to making jokes because that's hilarious. Sometimes I feel like I'm so far out of the, like, the hipster loop of magic. I'm like, is that a joke? The sand seems good. You're, you're just a joke. Oh my god. Somebody, can somebody get Robert some ice in the chat? The sand seems real slow. I like it. I like all the cards contained within it, but this hand seems better. I'm going to bottom you, even though I'm a big fan of your work. <laughs> His name is my name, too. Do -do 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 -do. Uh, in lieu of Fatal Push, I'm actually just going to play this. Or in lieu of uh, Search for Escont, I'm just going to play this because I'd rather be able to... Have the Sanctum come into play next turn. Untap. Maybe maybe it's better to play Search and then Sanctum next turn. But the three mana seems good. So plus we get to keep a Fatal Push. Here comes the History of Banalia, your favorite and mine. Oh, that guy's also your favorite and mine. So presumably, I hope they play like two knights here. Two 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 knights. Can you imagine? Beans and cornbread. Beans and cornbread. This is actually pretty good, I think. I think we're okay here. What do we got? What do we got? What is it gonna be? Um, 
I'm gonna keep the negate for the for the fact that I like negates. Nah, I'm not gonna cast anything here. So they get one one knight left. I got rid of three knights with one card. Three knights, one card. Must be knights. He said must be knights and it's a play on dice. Oh, it's magic the gathering humor, ladies and gentlemen. We have a good time. Sunday, chicken Sunday. Oh, I see. Man, where's my negate now? I wish this was an instant so badly because then you can actually be like, hey, I'll play Yahini's expertise in response to this and then negate for free. That would be so absolutely good. Absolutely good. Um, when it goes in your hand, you can have the Karn. That is going to be hard to deal with. Yes. Land? No. All right. I think we just died. feel good about this guy or this guy Well, it's a lot more than a 2-2 staring us down. Like, that's not how magic games are decided. Um, they're, in a, they're in a very, very commanding position here with the six, six mana card that we have no, no immediate answer to. Um, and very few answers in our deck to it outside of Frasca's Contempt. And we know we ha they have another card in their hand, so... Scarabgot's going to have a hard time doing that, though, because we're going to have to have seven mana up to be able to counter this Ixalan's Binding that's in their uh, their silver zone, <laughs> if you will. So, like, at any point, they can just activate Karn, negative one, get Ixalan's Binding, and get rid of Scarabgot. So it's really... I can't stand another release of Sky Skyrim. I mean, it doesn't it doesn't hurt you, right? Like, it's not an act, something that actively hurts you. So now they have Ixalan's Binding in hand. Okay. Yeah, one of my pet peeves, and uh, just to clarify, I love you guys. Uh, one of my pet peeves is when people get upset about things that don't actually affect them. It's like I was in a comic book group on Facebook, and people would always complain about virgin virgin issues of comics, which are the, the, the variants, variant covers uh, with no text on them, right? And people are like, "There's too many. They're making too many." And I'm like, "But it it actually has literally no effect. It has no effect on you. It doesn't affect you in any way, shape, or form. It actually, I mean, like if people want to buy them and they they get enjoyment out of them, then they can buy them. But if you don't want to do that, you don't have to do that." So it's very interesting to begrudge something that actually has absolutely, like, absolute zero effect on you. I will uh, not put this in my graveyard, by the way. So, this is a thing, I guess. Why does it annoy you, though? Like, what about it is annoying to you? And the fact is, like, I think you're 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 looking at it in reverse, right? Like, um, why 
Why did you call it the Shalai thing? <laughs> like it's some kind of weird object. Okay, but it makes you worried that they aren't working on the next one. But that's it, factually... Not only is that factually... That's not grounded in reality. Right? Like, that's a concern that is not founded in any way, shape, or form. So it's just an this irrational feeling that you have. You know? I'm just saying, like, it's just, it's just strange when people are like, I'm annoyed by this. And I'm like, well, why? Why let yourself be annoyed by something that is literally irrelevant? Quite literally. Um, we know they have Ixalan's binding in hand. It's only game. Why you have to be mad? It's only game. Why you have to be mad? It's a good question. Solid questions. Solid questions all. Um... We play this guy, they just literally Exxon's Binding attack us for six. Maybe they make another guy so that they attack us for eight. If we had one more mana, we can actually uh, Ifner Deadlands one of these guys and Fatal Push the other. Yeah, this, the team that's remastering Skyrim and putting it on different consoles is not the same team that's making the next game. If you think that, you have a fundamental misunderstanding of game studios and how they work. And so it's on you. You're getting annoyed because of your own, uh, you know, misconceptions about things. So that's... Keep that in mind. You're gone. We're at 14. We're not... We're not dead, but... Oh, Fatal Push the Karn? That actually seems good. Dang it, didn't work. It was close, though. I feel like we tried. We can flip this next turn, which is nice, because then we can keep up Negate and a guy if we draw land. So... I think we just pass here uh, with Fatal Push and Negate up. Because really, what choice do we have? I haven't seen anyone that's upset with Fallout 76. Everyone seems super hyped about it. Mother of God. So now they have binding in hand. Boop. Oh, post resolution negate on Karn also pretty good. I have not seen anyone uh, upset about it. I mean, you might just be, to be fair, you might just be hanging out in the wrong gaming social circles. Also, to be fair... Uh, so we block here, we take two, three, four, five, six, seven. If they they can't make another guy. Alright, well. Oh. Blue, blue, black, 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 green. We're just going to get another forest here because... Give me a land on the tippity-top. Tippity-top, land and tap. Nope, 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 nope. Yep. All right. This is how you survive Magic the Gathering games. Okay. We have no creatures in our graveyard, though. Keep that in mind. Long-time listener, first-time caller. What's up, ZJ? ZJS, rather. Mm 
beans and cornbread. Zachary Schnapp, if you were here, thank you so much for the pledge on Patreon. Really appreciate it. Oh, we can get their angel. That seems like gas. We can't get their angel. It's, it was exiled with Frasca's contempt. Why would you say that? I got real excited. And then I got less excited. I'll give you a planes. Beans and cornbread. Beans and cornbread. Okay. Um, I'm going to lower that, that volume, that Patreon volume. Oh, that was not it at all. That was just that was that was me. That was a test. I apologize. That was super loud. Subscribe. What is our volume at? Forty percent. Okay, we'll put that at forty percent. Seems loud. Oh, ten percent. Okay, no, we can probably go to twenty. Twenty percent there. Subscriptions. 20% there, pledges, 20% there. All right, let's see if that fixes things. Are you playing another Karn? Is this a cast, a cast Karn? Ugh, boy. Did they play the planes? They did play the planes, so they, we know they can't play Ixalan's Binding this turn. There are literally no creatures in either graveyard. That's really strange. Case, did the excitement go away? So they, they make another guy. It's 3-3-3-3, three, 2-2-3-2. Three, 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 two, two, three, two. So we block here. We take 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 8. We go to 2. Next turn we have 2 blockers and they have 4 guys. I don't. I think we have to actually negate this. That makes me feel bad because we know they have binding in hand. So... Okay. Doesn't feel good, but we're dead next turn. Like we, there's very few answers in our deck. Um, we can't actually get a Yehenny's expertise, unfortunately, because we don't have the mana for it. We can go one, two, three, activate, and then we'd have three left over. So that's not going to work. I and mean, we can get off the top, which would be reasonable here. That would actually be insane because then we get to kill Karn. They get to take our Scarab God, which is pretty bad, but you know. Them's the breaks, kids. Beans and cornbread. I'm going to assume you played this. They activated Karn. They reeled two cards. They played a planes. All right, so. Your last card. Oh, we, we actually know that. You're going to have one card in hand. It's Ixalan's Binding. Beans and cornbread. Meet me at the corner tomorrow night. This has got to be an alpha, right? We take six, go to four, but we get to eat Toolcraft Exemplar. Yeah, this is actually pretty sweet. I think I'm actually going to eat the Toolcraft Exemplar here because we actually have um, a good amount of options if we hit something. Mm, it's just better to keep up, right? If we hit a land, we can get something back. I don't think it's relevant. I definitely want the scry here. <gasps> oh, that's pretty good. 
put you on top. And they're presumably going to kill this guy, so I might as well get the, the token value out of it. However, now they could actually Ixalan's binding this guy. Uh, and then I think we just die. Block here, we take six. Yeah, actually we just died. The problem is they make a guy next turn anyway, and then the Ixalan's binding this guy. We have two blockers. So we block, block, and then we take six, and we gain two. So we're dead anyway. Yeah, the binding is really what what killed us. If they don't if actually if they take scarab gun instead, we're we're good. Nope, they didn't. Alright. Block here, we take six. Yep. We were dead anyway, so. I got excited because I thought we'd have enough creatures, but yep, another gifted Aetherborn. So even if we put that guy on the bottom, that was not going to work out for us, unfortunately. How often can you put a deck in the critique queue? As often as you'd like, buddy. Um, I have no idea. Yeah, because if we leave Karn alive, they just make another guy. So it's 3-3-3-3. Three, 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 three. Um, three, two, two, two. And we would have still had only two blockers. So if we block two of the three threes, we take f five? Maybe we would have lived. This hand seems great, actually. If we can... I'm actually not going to play this guy. I don't want this to be Sarah's Lame Travel Decks dot stream. Yeah, but that's actually totally fine. I appreciate Sarah's Lame Travel Decks. Stupid Java for 33 months in a row. Get out of town. That is awesome, dude. Thank you so much. Much love. Much love. We're going to we're gonna go with this forest next turn in case we draw Brontodon, but I think we took the Brontodons out, so we're not going to be drawing any Brontodons. So I guess we'll just play Swampodon. Who are you talking to? Oh my god. Duress is a cool card. Do 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 do. Actually, our hand is still gas, so I don't feel bad. This is a great... Look at this Banewood Punisher doing some work, man. See you later, bye. That was rude. Well, I guess we can play this Gifted Aetherborn now. I feel like our, we're actually on really good... <laughs> We're actually, I feel like we're doing really well right now because we got Vraska's Contempt and Chupacabra in hand. Got some life gain on the board. You got a way to get back something and another removal spell on deck. This is like a, yeah, it's like a one-sided Goblin Chain Whirler, only instead of a 3-3, three, three, it's a 2-2. Two, two. Oh, there we go. That's a good draw. Sure. We have four minutes and 57 seconds. Dang, I would be worried about that if... Uh... Show me that smile again. Sure. Oh... The best is ready to begin. Sarah, I put all my thoughts on Chain Whirler Ban on my latest Patreon audio podcast called Frank Thoughts. I think we're doing doing pretty good here.
It feels like four months is a long is a long time to have to deal with uh, to deal with Chain Whirler. To be fair. Oh, I guess we just win the game. <laughs> All right, deck seems sweet. I am uh, I'm a big fan right now. Is there anything I want to change? Maybe. I don't think Brontodon needs to be in the main deck. I don't think this is a main deck Brontodon format. This is what I feel. I'm a sub, not a patron. <laughs> That's fair. That's true. That's true. Why aren't those shrimp cats showing up? That's sad. I might name my child Zender Split. That is uh that is your that is your choice. The format's irrelevant in two weeks though. Why is the format irrelevant in two weeks? I don't understand. Jack of all trade, thank you so much, man. Welcome back. Twelve months in a row. Happy one year anniversary. Alrighty. What can I do here? What can I do? I actually didn't hate Bane with Punisher. I was surprised. I like Bronson on because it blocks as well, but it doesn't A, it doesn't block if they have Chain Whirler and Soul Scar Mage. And also I mean, does it block? Do you really wanna Do you really want to block a Chain Whirler? If they're attacking you with a Chain Whirler, are you really going to block with your Bronzedon? Uh, I couldn't tell you if Relic was good. We didn't draw Relic in any of those games. So. Did we get confirmation as to why the formats are relevant in two weeks? I didn't, I didn't understand. All right. I do like this main deck negate. Uh, I like Fatal Push. Is Unbridled Growth... Like, what are we doing with this Unbridled Growth? Just triggering Fatal Push? I... You know, Josh, I'm going to call you on that. I don't think this... I don't think a Brontanon is going to stop them from attacking. I, I think if you got a red deck facing you down, they're probably going to crash right on into this thing. Whether it's because they make it unable to block with Oncrop Crasher, whether it's because they make it unable to block with Earthshaker Kenra, whether it's because Hazred is just bigger, whether it's because it's actually a 3-3 due to a Chain Whirler, or, uh... I, I don't actually think it's stopping them from attacking. Alright. Either way, the biggest problem is, um... I actually I do kind of like it with Meldrotha, but is that too cute? I don't know. Maybe. Um, my biggest problem is the double green. Like I said, you have nine green sources, and I think if we didn't have the unbridled growth, we probably wouldn't be casting this in game one. I do I do like more hostage takers though. You know what else is good against chain whirler? Hostage taker. Yeah, there are definitely one or two cards banned in standard. Times three, I think. I feel like seven cards in standard band right now. It's pretty ridiculous, dude. You found Relic and Growth to both be a little too cute. I mean, Monsanto, did you play the deck? That sounds that sounds sarcastic, but no. I mean, you say you found them to be cute, too cute. Um, but you haven't played them, right? I only mentioned that because in the in the beginning we had this conversation about how like people like to attribute. Uh, oh, you played it. Uh, okay, did you did you play with the the relic and the and the growth in the in the Maldrotha list? Felder Guardian, Marvel Copter, Ruins, Attune, Refiner. There are seven cards banned in standard. Jeez, that's basically the modern ban list. <laughs> Interesting. I like relic because it ramps us to five, but I don't know if that's enough. Yeah, it doesn't feel like we played uh, Felidar or uh, Smuggler's Copter in ages. I actually don't know what we want here. I want to cut Mon Muldrotha. Muldrotha is like the centerpiece of the deck, but five, six drops is a lot. Also, I do want to... I mean, I hate to say it, but I want to add like a Karn to the deck because... Like, we only have four Planeswalkers. I feel like one Karn is fine. Do I just want to play Karn in all the decks? Maybe. It's very good, though. I also like Gonti and Hostage Taker. (sighs) 
it was the deck's namesake, but it, it can still be the deck's namesake. But I mean, as a as a six man a, a legendary creature, it's hard to justify having three of them because if you draw more than one in your opening hand or more than one at any point in the game, it's pretty rough. Especially because we have Liliana to get them back. I'm gonna cut one because realistically, I feel like we have to. Also, I hate Evolving Wilds. I really do. But you can get it back with Muldrotha, so it's a thing. Eh. I do like one Karn. I hate to say it. Are there better three drops that we can put in other than Brontodon? Eldestreborn seems like gas. I will put an Eldestreborn in there. That seems sick. What up, Dan Omac? Good to see you, buddy. Um, I don't want that much color. Three, three Field of Ruins is a lot. Three colorless lands in a deck that has, look at, like, look at these mana costs. Look at them. Look at them, Josh. <laughs> Lich's Mastery? No, we're not doing that. That's the only change I'm going to make right now. Because we actually, based on how the match played out, I didn't feel like we actually needed uh, any changes. So it's hard to make more changes as of right now. So, Josh, were you more, you, you weren't super impressed, but... Um, would you say the third Muldrotho impressed you more than the than the single Eldestreborn? Because that seems that seems unlikely. If that makes sense. Show me that's my. I like Jade Light Ranger. I almost like Jade Light Ranger more than Bronto Dawn. And by almost, I mean I actually do a lot. I really should get more drink, but we'll do that after these matches. Boy, these standard cues. Um, everyone should be very thrilled that in two days, Vintage Cube is back. So that's pretty sweet. Bitcakes, I'm on a diet, so this is as close to confections as I'm allowed to get. Dan, thank you so much for, uh, for sharing them with me. I appreciate that, buddy. Show me that's my again. Don't waste another. Why do I have this? Uh, what's this deck? What's this called? What's this song called? It's a, what's, the, what's the song to, though? It's an MTGO crash, and it, sometimes it feels that way. Sometimes it feels... I'm going to keep this hand. Because of the field getting us a blue... It's a slow hand, but family ties. No, it's not family ties. It's uh, Greg. 
Growing Pains. Nailed it. There it is. It's Growing Pains. Someone got it. Blue source. That's not a blue source at all. Hmm. The old double black, huh? Okay. Okay. What up, Atomic Frog? I'm oh my god, I'm not clicking on the I'm not clicking on that theme song. It's one thousand percent the two and a half men theme song. One thousand percent. This is a lot of things that I'm afraid of. Like go bump in the night. Ooh, do I just want to play that? Blah. Blah. Probably not. We want a hostage taker, right? So we're going to take three, four, five. Did this? I was like, did these swamps just change? And then I was like, oh, no, it's just these two that were different. Okay. It was good times? Oh, good times was so great, dude. Oh, I'm thinking. No, I'm not thinking of the good times. I'm thinking of um. what's happening. Oh, the what's happening theme song is so good. Oh, here we go. Yeah, we're just gonna... We probably wanna do this now, to be honest, because if we do it on their turn, they just get an extra damage in. I guess we can do a DOT. Alright, we're done here. We're gonna get demonetized for playing theme songs on our videos. It's a non-basic land. They don't even have anything out. Oh boy. Yeah, I, I, I still try to field basics because I'm just trying to get like, I get like Tectonic Edge, Ghost Quarter, Field of Ruin, Wasteland, Strip Mine, like all of these lands do different things and it's extremely frustrating. It's very hard to remember like which ones do which. At least for me anyway. You guys are gonna be like, no, it's super easy to remember. Stupid. And I'm like, well, I don't know. It's difficult. Maybe we'll top deck you Henny's expertise, huh? Oh. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. If they actually have another land, we're dead. Yeah, I literally just forgot that, that field of ruin was basics, not non non basics instead. Yeah, it's got to be Blister for one, which is not ideal. Because we, I'm pretty sure they have uh, Fatal Push, which is very, very obvious. So then they just kill us. Yep. Yeah. Not even. Not even close. Like you're just gonna, you're just gonna actually activate this and kill our thing if you don't have Fatal Push. So, or if you have Fatal, if you don't have Fatal Push, yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't think Punishers are gonna be good in this matchup. Brontanon doesn't seem great. Uh, Doomfall seems pretty good. Contempt seems good. Hostage Taker number two seems good. Um, Gonti seems fine. Yeah, Death Touch is good against the Shade. You just figure out what to take out. Like, so is Ravenous Chupacabra, for that matter, though. Um, like, Hostage Taker, also good against Shades. Walking Ballista seems pretty rough in this matchup. We can bring in Gontis instead. 
And I'll bring in a negate as well. All right, seems fine. I will play first. Ah, uh, why? Two lands is rough. Two lands is a little bit better. I mean, it's, I was going to say it's a little bit better when we have a... Uh, when we're on six. And we have two playables here. When do you make the call to side in duress? Um, usually against control decks where you want to resolve things. So if we're, if we're playing against a deck with counter spells, I want to duress them, take their counter spell, and then resolve my threat afterwards. Um, yeah, I think we just have to put this on the top. It lets us play... It lets us play Gifted Aetherborn next turn. Hopefully they didn't see many creatures, so... Because it's cheaper than negate, right? So, like, if you want to negate their counter spell, it's gonna co it's gonna cost you. Uh, I'm actually just gonna play wooded foothills here, wooded wooded woodland cemetery here, um, because you don't need the mana. So, Stephen C, thank you so much for seven months in a row. Really appreciate it, buddy. Welcome back. Oh, a little treasure map. I see. Let's oh, <laughs> deal. Oh, good times. Good times. Hey, look, we can feel the ruin this, guys. I guess we just play, um, you know, Karn. Seems good. Boop. I told you we wanted Karn in the deck, guys. I don't know what you were. I don't know what the problem was. Oh, and we hit a land. Beautiful. What did they not give us? Another land. Rude. Um, I think we're at a position where we can just attack here. We want to keep the blocker up that doesn't die to Fatal Push. Huh. If you just shot this... Are you going to are you gonna Fatal Push this guy anyway? Okay. If you just actually were planning on Vraska's Contempting the car and you probably wouldn't have shot him with the Walking Ballista... Now, now I'm on YouTube watching various 80s and 90s TV show theme songs. That seems uh, like the correct play. As far as I can tell. This is nice because I'm pretty sure they're just going to give us a land. So, oh, we didn't even get a land. They're going to give us a gift today, they're born. Little do they know. It's the final countdown. I don't know. I think Eldest Reborn there was pretty solid. Get rid of their gifts. Get rid of their Eatherborn. And now we have the option of also getting back Gonti with the uh, Eldest Reborn. Hmm? Mehaps. Seems good.
All right, let's see what happens here. Yep. <gasps> what? They know I can get that back, right? <laughs> that seems real good, dude. Oh, boy. Hold on one second, guys. Got to... All right, um, I guess we just Karn again. I don't think we care about uh, Fatal Push or Woodland Cemetario here. We can also just Lilian, uh, we can Lilian and get Gonti back here. That seems pretty okay. I guess we'll see what we get here. Boy, boy. Boy, boy, boy. Yeah, let's just do this. Oh. Uh, I think I actually want the never return instead. Uh, I'll exile... <laughs> Ooh, which, which of these do... I'll exile the never and see what happens. Well, I guess the whole thing gets exiled. Okay. So they have two cards. Do we attack here? Probably not. If we attack, they don't block. They have a way to deal with Gonti. They kill Ileana. That seems bad. I'd rather them have two answers than one. They might also have their own Liliana to get back their Demon Lord Bells unlock, which is good. But then we just get to Vraska. So. Yep. All right. That's what I figured. They had their own plan. They got one gifted Aetherborn. There's a lot of things going on here. We can also get a Doomfall from our... Uh, I wish I had an instant speed removal for this guy so I can get, get it back. Can't do anything though, right? We can draw a card. That's not going to do it. Um, yeah, I guess it's just gifted Aetherborn. That's sad. I mean, we can Vraska and kill the Demon Lord. A lot of things we can do here. Is random card better than Fatal Push or I wish this came into play on tap, then we'd have one, two, three, four, five, six. Actually, Vraska gives us Yeah, this is actually the where you want to be. This is the play. We Vraska, we kill this guy and make a make a treasure. Uh grab Fatal Push. Crack this for a black. Kill this guy. Make a Zomboy. Play a land. Attack Lily, attack your face. Seems okay. Uh, I feel like we're we're pretty way ahead. <laughs> yeah, see, like this is what I mean. Like, just when as soon as you play Karn, you're like, "Yep, this card is oppressive." Not oppressive. It's not even oppressive. It's just very, very good. It's just a way to get two. Oh, dang it! This is rude. 
Oh, and the one card they stole, uh, they're able to cast with the Treasure Cove. That's pretty sweet. That's pretty funny. Comical, you might say. Okay, well, that's pretty good, I guess. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. So I'm just going to see if I can get a land here. Also, Bells and Locks in the Graveyard again. That's could be relevant at some point. Do you remember that time uh, I only didn't add Karn because I don't have any? Well, that's relevant. See, that's stuff I need to know because I can't make the best deck if I think... I have to know all of your decisions and why. Um, because if you're if you're doing something for budgetary reasons, it's probably not going to be the best the best decision, right? It's just it was just a concession you had to make, and that's totally understandable. Um, we have no creatures in the graveyard, so we'll just do this, Jobby. We're not going to kill Veraska here. Um, we will actually get rid of you. One, two. Well, you can stay home. Okay, everything has been done. I don't... I feel like we're... We're far ahead. Um, there is the possibility that if we play this guy... I don't think we're going to need two negates. I think it's probably safer to play this guy. I think we won the game. That went quite well. Quite well. Quite well. Why is he saying it like that? I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to submit like this. It's all been done. Ooh -hoo -hoo. <laughs> Fantastic. You guys are wonderful. Oh, this hand is reasonable. I'll keep it. We got two plays, and then we got the Muldratha that we can probably play for the first time ever, which is pretty cool. Karn has a drop rate of 1 out of 50 drafts per Laporte. Uh, it's actually 1 out of 59, so that's significantly worse. So 200 drafts should get you a play set. Uh, it's, yeah, so two, 240. 240 for a play set, unfortunately. I want to play this first because I don't want to give you just a thing to remove very easily and search for Escanta starts to add up. Oh, and they missed a land drop. Um, We don't actually need this, so I will put it in the graveyard. And we're looking for a green land, and we found one. I'm not going to do that. If we don't play Aetherborn here, actually... We can actually cycle Fetid Pools. If we don't play Aetherborn here, if they don't draw a land, they have to discard something, which is pretty good. If we play it, they're just going to be like, hey, Fatal Push. And I'll be like, oh, that's sad. And I don't actually want to cycle, but... Yeah, we're just going to pass here. It just doesn't feel correct. Oh, a little treasure map. It's my little treasure map. You don't know what I got. Going to get a, plane, a forest here for obvious reasons. What are you going to be? Botanical Sanctum? I don't think we need a land that comes into play tapped. And we also have five in hand. So we're only one away from Muldrotha at this point. Oh, that's a good draw. Let's do that. Reveal your hand, sir. Okay. Bells and Lock. There is a Fatal Push. There's also a Never Return. Braska's Contempt. I think I actually want to take the Doomfall. 
Because I don't want you to take my things that we're trying to play. So next turn we can play Liliana. I wish they didn't have Vraska's Contempt and... Um, okay, so hold on. We can get rid of Never and Return. You hit a land here. So we, these are the exact one, two, three, four, six cards in your hand. Yeah, the, un the unfortunate part is they get to go untap, never return on this on Liliana, and then play Muldrotha. Or, and then they get to Frasca's Contempt on Muldrotha. So. <sighs> I'm not going to put the Chupacabra in the graveyard because it's very good. Maybe we wait to play Liliana, we kill Muldrotha, but then they're just going to Frasca's Contempt Muldrotha. So. At least they'll waste their turn doing this. And they could Fatal Push this 2-2 if they really want to. Wow, they do. Okay. Gonti, Dreadshade, and Demon Lord Bells and Lock are our threats. Oh, if they don't have to... This is interesting because they don't have to land. They don't get to never return. They hit a land. <laughs> so good at this game. Oh! Put Gonti into the graveyard? No, sir. So, one, two, three, four. Uh, never return seems good, especially when they have, yeah, let's, although they do get another, they do get another return in their graveyard if we do that. I don't think we're going to play Dreadshade, though. What do they have? They have one removal spell? Hmm. Our record is 1-0 and we're in game three with in the second match. Could have also played Aetherborn this turn if we tapped differently, but then we'd have to take two damage. I don't think that's super relevant. Yeah, I'm also I'm just gonna take the Dread Shade. I don't want them to have another like when we have Muldrotha in hand. I don't want them to have another um, answer for our permanence in the graveyard. I'm gonna play a Demon Lord Belzid Lock. Or just a Gaunti, sure. Enjoy. Joke's on you. Our cards even aren't even that good. That's pretty good. That's pretty, 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 pretty good. Wow, one, one away from top. Oh, one win. I gotcha. I gotcha. Four, five, six. I think it's just Chupacapra. Chupacapra? So they don't have Gaunti anymore. It's a lot of problematic creatures on our board. And if we ever get Ravenous Chupacom around. Like we're trying to, we we got to get rid of this Vraska's contempt on something because these two are going to take over the game if we're able to. Uh... Five. 
Five mana. A demon lord of bells and luck. You hit a Vraska's Contempt and a Dread Shade. So two Vraska's Contempts in hand now, which is sad. Oh, and a Never Return. All right, so you drew three cards off of it. Good lord. That's solid. Necron, thank you so much for the sub. Really appreciate it. Welcome. Three, four, five, six. We can go Muldrotha into like land here, which would be nice. <laughs> he says like an order rather than a suggestion. How dare you? How don't you tell me what to do? Draw a card, eh? So we know five of the six cards in your hand. Soon to be five of the seven cards in your hand. Oh, that's a nice Malcolm in the Middle meme you did there. <laughs> At least I can do is throw my prime at you. Appreciate it. Necron, I, 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 thank you, buddy. Despite their abundance of riches here, I do feel like we're in good shape. I really do always have Christmas music stuck in my head, and I have no idea why. It's very strange. Well, that's pretty good. Congrats on always being able to cast my cards that I give you off of Gonti. This is the best part about playing the mono black deck is that all your cards are mediocre, so, um, you know, you don't ever have to feel bad when your opponent steals them. You get a Vraska and a Hostage Shaker, we get a Dread Shade. All right, well, that's good. I feel like you can't attack with this Bells Unlock. What? I don't understand it. Oh, good lord. That was an aggressive attack. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. We can go. What is? What do we do? What do we do? What do we do? Speaking of raisins, hmm. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We want to hit nine so we can actually, uh... We have to actually attack with all three or else they actually Vraska's Contempt one of them. Which might be fine. If you do that, you're not drawing a card, so sure. One, two, three, four, five, six. Woodland Cemetery. Search for Ascanta. Yeah, this dude's getting Vraska's Contempt faux show. Post-haste. 
just can't play around at a certain point. And we're just hoping to Scarab God next turn and also be able to activate one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We just need to hit one land that comes into play untapped. Could be anything from a Drowned Catacomb to a Woodland Cemetery to a Basic to an Ifner Deadlands. But I think we're out of Ifner Deadlands. And I'm all out of Ifner Deadlands. Well, we're at nine. One of these is gone. Played a Swamp. That's good. So you know four of the... Didn't know about that. So we still know four of the six cards in your hand. Four of the five cards in your hand. God. Oh, Gante, you're so obnoxious. I'm sorry, but it's true. You would never think... Fatal push? Is Fatal push my Aetherborn? Is there a creature for us to bring back? Yeah, they have Dreadshade right here. Never return on Gonti. Interesting. Um. No. No. Huh. That's actually pretty good. And we just have to attack here with both. If they want to trade here, they can eat our Ravenous Chupacabra. That's totally fine. I guess they... Oh, they do have... Oh, no, they, they got rid of this, though. So that's actually fine. Yeah, we're definitely getting rid of Liana here. Or trying to, at least. You misspelled bug in the description? No, I got it right. It says Sultai right there. It says S-U-L-T-A-I, right? I spelled that right. Yeah, it says Sultai. Weird. Thank goodness your PhD is not in spelling. <laughs> we could also Memorial to Folly to get back to Chupacabra and kill the Demon Lord. Which actually puts us in pretty good shape, I think. One, two, three. Chupacabra, one, two, three. I do kind of like Scarab God better, though. Because it forces them to have two removal spells. For a Scarab God, no less. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, we don't have enough mana to animate Chupacabra. That would be insane. I think the Ravenous Chups is the best play. I disagree with you, Matthew. Murray. Heavily, sir. Heavily. Oh, God. So they hit two of our Vraskas? Wow. That's insane. Congratulations. That's brutal, dude. Yep. And now they get to. Yep. They just had to have both. What's my opinion on Skilo? Um. He's good. I like Skilo. He wishes he was a little bit taller. He wishes he was a baller. So now he gets to reanimate Choops and, and kill the Demon Lord. Why not use Fatal Push? Be uh, well, we did. One, two, three... No, I'm going to keep this. Oh, wow, I didn't want to flip that. Oh, that was the wrong button. That's stupid. That was not the right... Not the right button, ladies and gentlemen. Yep. So we know you have Dreadshade, Dreadshade in hand. And we have Ascanto, which is a good card, but Dreadshade with double Cabal Stronghold is nothing to... Nothing to 
All right, you drew one card. Great. I felt like you were in good shape. This is this is. You guys are like, man, I'm paying this guy to test my decks. All he does is misclick. It's unbelievable. <laughs> Jesus. Your hits are absolutely un unreal. Like. They play two Gontis. They hit both of our both of our Vraskas. Cool. That's a good one, but jeez. We almost have to get rid of Karn here. But then this guy kills us, so who knows? Hmm. It's not bad. <laughs> How do you win if you don't get the perfect draw? Yeah, that I want to be that guy. Yep. Uh, any order. Uh, one, two, three, four. Actually, I'm pretty sure we're dead. We can't beat double double dread shade here. Yeah, let's just we're done. This game's over. That is a thing. All right. Um Kill their dad lands lol. I have no idea what you're saying right now, Robert. I'm so sorry about your I feel like you got a stroke. Kill their dad lands lol. That was Robert's stroke, guys. Hate dads. Okay, well, that's weird. No idea what he's saying right now. Okay. Honestly, why isn't Karn in this deck? This is a Karn deck through and through. Yeah, Swole Mike had a stroke. It was real sad. You can see the, the results of his stroking out. I still have yet to play an Araska Relic. Nope, I'm good. No, don't let him don't let him lie to you guys. He's not doing well. Thoughts and prayers to Rob's family. I don't feel like there's any reason not to be playing. Like, there's no reason to play to not play Karn. It's really strange. Is that strange? I don't know. I will play first. 665 Walking Ballista. This hand is not where you want to be. This hand's better. Okay, I'll take it. I'll take it. Keep. Right, he said budget, of course. Um, and I'm and I'm countering that and saying, if you can get Karns, the deck is better with Karn. That's what I'm saying. Let's see if they have a spell pierce. Oh, I literally thought that I was like, oh my god, come on. Uh there there's only one hostage taker in the main deck, so we just left it in there. I took out uh one or two Bronto Dons. Um Island to Island, what does that mean? I'll put you in the graveyard. We also don't have double black yet, so let's not be too greedy. I'm gonna field of ruin so I can get rid of their island and we can get a second black source. Hugh, 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 Hugh. He never learns. Here we go. No, oh, what in the earth? How do you have nothing by this turn? 
Yep, that can go in the graveyard too. I don't understand what's happening right now. Outcome Storm? I don't even know what that is. What's Outcome Storm? Is that a card? This just doesn't resolve, right? We just hold it. I have no incentive to play this thing. Like, if you guys want to play something, I'll respond with a Karn. But right now I have a search. What is this? We got an instant speed? You got flashy? You did have a flashy boy. Uh, I feel like if they'd be... I feel like they'd be playing... Oh, paradoxical outcome. Yeah, I feel like they'd be playing more artifacts if that were the case. I don't think they're going to turn for nothing. But maybe that's just me. Graveyard, all of these double black cards. Oh my god. Magic is so hard. Mono blue chickens is right. Is this card legendary? Dang it. Alright, well they didn't play anything else. Can you play like a memorial of genius so I can get rid of it? Yep, graveyard as well. All right. Let's see that disallow. Roll that beautiful disallow footage. Wow. I do not have an extra four mana for that. This isn't even a pirate, it's a bird wizard. Get wrecked. Did they get wrecked? No, I guess not. Look at that, they kept up, I'm going to keep up my mana to counter your thing. <laughs> yep, put you in the graveyard, because even though you're a land, you don't do anything for us, my friend. And... Resolved. Fascinating. Look out, dispersal, the absolute BM. <laughs> oh, crying out loud. Ain't that the truth? Chicken Sunday. Look at all these chickens. Oh, I see. This is also BM, just to be clear. Get wrecked. I put that chicken in the trash can. I mean, you can tell they have a counterspell, they're just holding it, because if they protect their gin, they win in two turns. So, you don't waste your counterspells on worthless cards that don't actually affect your clock. That's magic in a nutshell. No, I want that. Uh, eh. The thing is, if they have a negate, or a spell pierce, Chupacabra is good here. But... If they have just Lookout's Dispersal, then we're dead either way. It doesn't matter when we play this Chupacabra. So I'm going to concede. I'm going to hover over it so they can pay their costs. We have one mana up. Oh! Oh, they're just going to play another... Oh. That's actually fine. Well, I'll be a biscuit. Sure. If they have just another Curious Obsession to put on this guy, I'd be real surprised because why like bounce your other guy? I don't understand, but I guess we're going to one here. That's pretty bad, especially because they get to play the other guy. I thought we were... I thought we were doing well. But now we have to die. Exile this guy, we still lied to this guy. So 
I don't think there's anything else we can draw here, but <sighs> it's real close. We need one more black. Field of Ruin cursed us. This is surprisingly close, actually. Being able to, like, contempt this guy, walking bliss to your face, and then yeah, either one. Fatal Push doesn't save us. We don't have mana for that. Yeah, I think we're dead here. Yeah, I think this card, I think Field of Ruin is... It doesn't matter if they have counter spells. We're dead, Matthew Ori. I have no idea what you're saying, dude. <laughs> oh, boy. All right, so Bane of Punisher comes out again. I just don't think Bane of Punisher... I don't think the... I don't think the the reward is not high enough. Does that make sense? Like, I think Doomfall is just a better card. Brontodon can come out for another Doomfall. Duresses can definitely come in. Unbridled Growth is cute. Like, again, I'd rather just take out the cute cards for good cards. Does that make sense? Like, more proactive cards. Like, here I want these Duresses. I want the Negates. Maybe. Walking Ballista seems fine here, but I don't think I want three. free info like I know their deck they're just playing the blue the mono blue flyers deck yeah I definitely want the last Vraska's contempt we want we want answers to the uh, well to their stupid chickens really Ugh, seems fine <sighs> I will play first. Uh, whatever. I think we want Thoughtseize here. I always want Thoughtseize. Does he all the four mana flambing six six for? Yeah, that guy. That guy's good. Let's see what you got. Double lookouts dispersal? Sure. Bunch of corsets spoiled today. You're gone. Which one is this? The Almond Cat one? That one's gone. And the other one was a weird Dominaria one. Yep, that one's gone. All right. No blocks. Huh. Huh. 
this is a nice position to be in because we're on we have the initiative we can do things and they have to respond to those things So this guy costs two for you. Oh, I just got rid of it. That was cool. All right, so these are the lands you've played. Neither one was this one. Oh, but maybe this is it. Yeah, I guess you played that, sure. So now you have Jin and Lookout's Dispersal. Okay, that's fine. And if you want to look out to disperse all this, that's fine, because, you know, the other cards in my hand are significantly stronger. This is interesting standard, because the two out of the three matches we've played so far have been mono-colored. Mono-black and mono-blue, mono, mono blue, which is pretty sweet that both of those can, can exist together. Um, one, two, three, four, five, well, six lands... It doesn't do what we want it to do, especially because they have the stupid thing. But I guess that's now nah, put it in the graveyard. Huh. All right, that's good. Next turn. Next turn we can play a five dropper. Uh, I don't want to attack with you because then one of these guys blocks, and that's pretty bad. Actually, we make this. Do they? What do they lose? Target to lose all abilities and has base power and tough. They're not going to lose their pirate nature, though, which is sad. And also, you can block here. So I guess we only have one real attack here. You're just taking two. Fabian DeGroote, thanks so much for the Patreon support really appreciate it not sure if you're here in the stream or not but either way thank you very much cool 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 i just put out a um this past maybe like three days ago i put out a um what do you call it uh i, I do a, a weekly podcast on my patreon called frank thoughts it's about 15 to 20 minutes long and huh and i put one out on my thoughts about Chain Whirler. So if you guys are interested in that, be sure to give it a listen. Did you see that zombie's hands? I didn't actually. Um, They still have it in hand. So I guess we're going to just wait. Oh, this card is so obnoxious. That was like the perfect draw for them. Did I add whirling sounds to the podcast? I don't know what that means. The answer is no. But. Oh, actually, I like this because we can make this guy unable to do a thing. Yeah, this is fine. Lose your abilities. Helicopter worlds? No. Why? No. Yeah, we're gonna. Me and Robert are gonna put on a golf, a golf Patreon video. It's gonna be pretty sweet. Hey guys, welcome to the uh, Frank Lepore stream, sponsored by Titleist Golf Balls. Here on the internet, I'm your host, Steven Sternberg. Which doesn't make any sense. So, yep, this seems better. Hey, man, thank you so much for the uh, the support. Really appreciate it.
Jersey, have a good uh, afternoon at work. Enjoy your enjoy your work. I'll I'll try to stay as frosty as possible. Uh, if they're Deadlands, well, we know they don't have. Well, we know they didn't have a counter spell as of recently. I'll put the Deadlands in the graveyard. I could care less about the Deadlands. The lands of the dead. Well, that's weird. I'm just gonna attack with this hostage checker because getting it back is a uh, pretty choice. Deal. They're also at six? Oof. I hope you didn't draw another lookouts dispersal. I hope you didn't draw a nimble obstructionist. You did. You top deck nimble obstructionist. I want to vomit. <laughs> Just straight vomit all over my monitor right now. One, two, three, get back hostage shaker. We're still two mana shy of doing that. Oh, one at Liliana, one at my face. Actually, this flips now, so if we find a land on top, we can play the land, get back hostage taker. Um that's pretty good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No. I'll trade. So one thing we can do is shoot them for three in the face. Return this guy. Shoot them for another three. That seems good. We also just get rid of Storm, Siren Storm Tabor, which is probably better. Because then we get to play a card and they only have one guy on board at that point. So. Alternatively, we could have just taken three here and put one counter on this guy to keep him alive. But I feel like our mana is better suited doing other things. Are you going to sacrifice it to counter this? Okay, sure. <laughs> oh, mono nimble obstructionist dot deck. Well, I just drew a Tempest Gin. Of course you did. Why wouldn't you? Three, four, five, six. Get a land. Get a gifted Aetherborn. That's actually pretty good. That's surprisingly good, I guess. One, two, three, four. Five, six, Maldrotha. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So long as we don't die. Woodland Cemetery. Gifted Aetherborn. Would you mind critiquing a deck I put together when you have a moment? Um, possibly. I mean,. That is a feature that I derive a good portion of my income from, unfortunately. Eleven. That's a good amount. Eleven is not nothing. We do have a hostage taker in the graveyard. And another land. But they have a star Siren Storm Tamer on board. Oh, come on. Seriously? Good lord, dude. Vomit. Absolute vomit. This gets rid of the guy, and then we can play Walking Ballista for for two. One, two, three, four, five, five, eight. The problem is, like, even if we 
even if we get through, like they're going to block here. They have to block here. So that's pretty good. Um, I don't see Ifner Deadlands doing much here. We hostage take this guy, they counter it. I think that's... Is that... They have no cards. We play hostage taker. They have they have to counter it. We attack with both. They block here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. I guess we can negative this guy. One, two, three, four. Siren Storm Tamer. Yes, correct. Can we learn to my house to for more value? Uh, yes, but we need we want the mana. I, I'm not sure what we're doing with our lands yet. We might actually fetid pools and sack or fetid pools to cycle. We also want to keep Ifner dead lands up. Like they literally have to block here. And then we take eight, nine, ten, eleven. Twelve if they play another land. They go to four, and then we can walking ballista for two. I'm trying to figure out if we just lose. I like that you guys are asking these questions that we're literally trying to figure it out now. So six, seven, eight, nine. Yes, there are several fatal pushes in the deck. You had to attack with both first? That doesn't make any sense. If we attack with both first, we don't get to play anything in the graveyard because Muldroth is dead. That's a terrible play. <laughs> I like that you guys think you can still cast things with Muldrotha after he blocks with Tempest Jin to kill Muldrotha. <laughs> <laughs> you still get the ability even when it's in the graveyard, right? No. No, you don't. That's not how Magic the Gathering works. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we do have to cycle the land, unfortunately. Fatal push one time. <laughs> not going to do it. All right. Well, I mean, they got super lucky with multiple Siren Storm Chasers and uh, multiple Nimble Obstructionists exactly when they needed them, so... <sighs> block here who just timed out destiny trigger i'm pretty sure destiny trigger was not talking about us i'm pretty sure destiny trigger was talking about the people just making up lines yep and that's game all right i feel like there needs to be more good black uh removal spells that do not cost four friggin' mana, like Ravenous Chupacabra, Vraska's Contempt, Hostage Taker, Gaunti. Like, there's so many cards in black that cost literally four mana. Um, Should have used this content to look for push. Um, yeah, maybe. But, what are you going to do? Maybe it's still possible to check and see how that worked out. Draw a card. Draw a card. So we, what did we do? We did four for... Um, so this is three, one, two. We would have had... Yeah, we would have hit these three in addition to the draw and search for us contest. So no harm done, but...
Never Return is three. Actually, I do like Never Return. The problem is, like, are we just turning the deck into blue-black control or, like, blue-black mid-range? Like, what, like, our only green is, like, basically these, one Brontodon, which doesn't really make much sense now, and the un, the Unbridled Growth. I also think Field of Ruins and uh, Arazka Relic are kind of greedy. Cast Down does cost two. I actually like Cast Down a lot because it does deal with the stupid red creatures and the stupid black creatures. I think two cast down is pretty good. I'm going to take the relics out. We have yet to draw a relic, and it hasn't really affected our games. You should have attacked first. You should have attacked first so that they block your Muldrotha and kill it. And, um, you know, then you don't get to actually use the ability. But then after after they blocked it and killed it, you should have used the ability anyway. Duh. <laughs> don't let Magic Online tell you how to win games. I'll cut one Walking Ballista. I'll cut the Unbridled Growth. Ooh, a chai whirler sounds delicious. Is that, uh, can I get that at Starbucks? Is that like a chai where they stir in, I don't know, paprika? That sounds terrible. Yeah, Field of Ruin also uh, led to some feel bads here. I'm going to add one more island. Do we have a Jaya deck yet? Does anyone have a Jaya deck? I don't think so. I like all of the four drops as a problem. I'd rather there be a two drop, like uh, a Razka Relic, but not not like Servant of the Conduit because that's bad. I like all of these. I like these. I also wish we had better cards to reanimate, but I mean like Muldrotha and Scarab God are not terrible. Robert, I, did, I, I checked them already, buddy. I don't like this guy in the main deck. I'm not going to lie to you. I think he's just way overrated right now. I mean, not in the green decks. Like, if you're playing a green deck, totally put him in there. But I think in the decks that, like, aren't running a ton of green. Like, this one isn't. Um, it's just not... It's not doing it. It's not doing it for you. I almost like Duress in the main deck here. There are so many Duressable targets. I wonder if we can just Duress in the main deck. And we get one more card. I actually didn't mind the Bane Whip Punisher. This is the only green we have, which is, I think, fine. But why do we have less Drowned Catacombs than Woodland Cemeteries? Let's fix that. I guess it made sense with Threshing Brontodon. The Bronto D. And I think we'll just add one more Hostage Taker, because that's another good card. The Sultai Lady? Is this a lady? Is Muldrotha... I don't actually know the answer to that. So as far as three drops go, Champion of Wits is really one of our only options. Adish for Harvester is kind of meh. I don't mind Death Gorge Scavenger, actually. That guy could be relevant. This is one of my favorite cards in the... Um, when Ixalan first came out, I was playing this guy. I'm going to add another Hostage Taker to the sideboard instead. Maybe. Oh, this card's fine, though. I like this card a lot. I don't like Walking Ballista. I know it sounds weird. It's good in certain matchups, but not really. I don't know if here is the place for it. Steel Leaf Guy? What are you saying, Iron Chef Sammy? Are we, are we putting Steel Leaf Guy in the deck? Is that what you want to do? You want to play a triple green card in here? I like Scavenger a lot. Like, it does a lot of things. Like, either exiling the creature cards is good because you gain uh, you gain two life. Two life could be relevant. Um, or exiling, like, Never Return or something. This is 61. We need one cut. It's time to just cut one Walking Ballista. Take out one Doomfall for it. All right, I'm going to try this. Out of play points again. My god. Is Karn good enough with no artifacts? Why? You do not need artifacts to run Karn. Karn's third ability is certainly not the best one on the card. Um, We might have room for Nissa, but again, we're like, we're not 
very heavy green. Why do you think a heavier amount of green in the list is better for Muldrotha? I don't understand that. My nickname in high school is Heavy Green. <laughs> oh, what up, Heavy Green? Haji Galashi, whenever I see you in chat, I'm going to call you Heavy Green now. Heavy Green confirmed. Then you come along and all the rest is good. Did you just say good instead of history? Is that what you just did there? Yes. Keep. Look at all these tap lands. Let's play Memorial to Genius first. In case we draw that Aetherborn, Gifted Aetherborn, then we can't cast it on turn two. That's what we're doing that for. Realistically, it's because it opens us up to be playing blue spells before turn four, but... I'm swiping, not typing. I feel like that's a lyric from your rap album. Gifted today they're born off the top. Okay. Got that turn three to rest, though. You know how we do. Oh, what do you got here? Liliana, Death's Majesty, either Meltdown, Vraska's Contempt. Um, Vraska's Contempt could sort of our Vraska. Don't know much else though. That's a pretty boring hand. Liliana, we have answers for in in our own Vraska's Contempt. I want to take the Contempt here because our Vraska seems stronger than your Liliana. One called it, Buck. Oh my god. The called it, Buck, is Mike's fetch. He keeps trying to make it happen. Stop trying to make fetch happen, Michael. Robert. Swole Michael Robert. Really? That's one of your draws? Seems good. So we went duress, they played a swamp, and then they played an island. So we know about swamp and island. 100 I got got bits. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Why are you taking so long? There you go. Bunch of good choices, huh? I see. The problem is, we go Ravenous Chupacabra, we get rid of this guy, they just get it back with, uh... Oh, of course we don't hit another land. God, magic is so hard sometimes, dude. Do we just not do anything here? That feels more correct than doing something two of your cards do nothing god I just want Gonti in all of my Sultai decks it just draws you a card and it's one of like the best four cards in their deck usually or the best of four cards in their deck rather so those are completely different those both mean different completely different things So 
So actually, if they play their Liliana, we can... Sure. Boy, these top picks have been very good. Doomfall and Gonti. Congrats. What's the biggest animal you can reasonably kill with your bare hands? Um, I don't know. I uh, I don't really think about killing animals very frequently, because that seems sad. What do we want here? Second blue? I don't think we need a second blue. We got a green, black. I don't think we need a black though for, for any. I guess we'll just get a green here. What's the biggest vegetable you can kill with your bear? <laughs> um. Well, I don't eat cheeseburgers, so I couldn't tell you that either. Um, I could probably. God, biggest vegetable? Probably an eggplant. Eggplant's basically meat. Zaxor, Rob get no cred bit. That's pretty good. He deserves no cred. Sure. Interesting. So if we hit a land, we just get to go Vraska here? So we now have Meltdown, Liliana, Fatal Push in hand. Seems good. I eat cheeseburgers, Frank. Can you kill me with your with your care hands, buddy? You don't even know what I could kill with my care hands. Boy, I tell you what. Look at my care hands. That doesn't make any sense. The stream got weird all of a sudden. I blame my care hands. How many magic cards can you hold in your hands? Are they stacked, or am I just holding them loosely? These are all valid questions that we need to ask ourselves. getting real annoyed by these little tiny flies. I think they just live in my house now. So Yeheni's expertise is gone. What did you do? How did you get these cards? Oh, these were milled. Okay. So we know you either melt down on one other card. I got you. I got you. Let's create a merry little pirate. Two, three, four. Choop, choop, choop a loop. Oh, we just moved that, so that's going to be sad. Playland. So next turn we can put them to what? One? And then we attack with both? They can go block with their guy, either melt down on this guy. Robert, I'll see you later, buddy. Stacked? How many magic cards can I balance on my hands? You're asking the good questions here, man. These were good hits. You got both Champion of Wits and another return in the graveyard. Ooh. How can they kill Vraska? Am I missing something?
But being good magic players and getting to destroy a target planeswalker card, jokes on them. That's in the graveyard. So now they still have either meltdown and one other card. Okay. It's the final meltdown. Look at this Bane with Punisher doing work for three mana here. If you could choose one card to never be printed, which one would you choose to never to never have been printed? Because to say to never be printed means in the future it will never be printed. So it has to be already printed is what you're asking me, right? So they go block meltdown. Straw non zombos. It's intriguing. If you, only if you dropped only if the cheese based sandwich you dropped was was toasted. I'm just gonna keep creating pirates. Pirates all day. I don't have any zombos, which is kind of scary. So I guess we're attacking this Liliana here. Liliana can't get our creatures from the graveyard, so that's that's relevant. So they're gonna block here and put the meltdown on this guy. That's rough. Yep, as predicted, one down. Yep. All right. So I'm gonna keep up moment Memorial to Folly instead of playing Search because if they try to exile that with uh, like Return, I don't think they're gonna Liliana's negative seven. That seems bad. They're probably just gonna play Champion of Wits, but then they might lose. You're going on a job with me. Thanks for the entertainment. Cheer. <laughs> Anytime, buddy. Chef to chief. Oh, we want to jog with you. Okay. Either one would work. I'll take a job or a jog. We don't know any cards in your hand anymore, so. If you hit a land, you can play Champion of Wits. If not, you can play Never Return. And I... I guess you could target anything that's not Chupacabra. But I like the option of getting... Really... So I just negated that and got a Chupacabra back? That's pretty good. Not your finest moment, Patolin 7878. Now you may be dead. I have two creatures and you are at one life. You have to have a removal spell in your hand that costs two mana. Actually, we'll just play Chupacabra and make sure that it's uh, academic. Pa pow See you later. Bye. Got him. What's up, Undreamt Tuna? And that's how Vraska wins the game with her ultimate. So, their deck had a bunch of things that I don't like. Death Gorge Scavenger seems great against them. Like, absolutely great. Exile them creatures that you want to reanimate, including... Uh, what's it called? What's that one we don't like? Champion of Wits. Dead the George Raptor. You are right. That is correct. You are right. I'll bring in this other Vraska's Contempt. You like Planeswalkers. I just feel like I'm always taking out Walking Ballista. I don't think I care about Cast Down in this matchup. I'm going to bring in Gonti, Gonti, Doomfall. I don't know if I care about Fatal Push either, to be honest with you. 
Which phone should you get? I have the Galaxy S9 Plus, and I uh, I think it's great. Negate, negate, Doomfall. I think this is actually a pretty good configuration. Actually, Bane of Punisher can come out for a negate. And, uh, yeah, let's do that. What the heck? What the heck? It's the final schmountain down. This hand's not going to be keep kept. Not going to be kept. So I'm going to mulligan it. This hand, I will keep. Maybe I do adore my phone. You don't know. You don't know my phone life. You don't know my phone life. Pretty okay. God, I'm such a gifted Aetherborn fan. This card is great. It just does everything I want. Even though it dies to Fatal Push, like, cool. Like, when they don't have it or against decks that obviously aren't black, like, just such a such a hard dude to deal with. And you get, like, the, the lifelink and you get the death touch. You just get it all. Ooh. Let's reveal your hand, little man. Don't negate me, bro. I asked you nicely not to negate me. That's rude. Super rude. It's like the rudest thing you could possibly do, I think. Like you murdered my whole family. And now I have to get revenge. Gonti's Gonti's here to get revenge. Expertise, expertise. Ooh, hour of glory. Let's do that. Expertise seems interesting because it's only really good against my um like if I have Vraska and put a bunch of dudes into play. Hey, what up, McGimp? Well, biscuits. I too will get busy chewing. Did I say I'm a gifted Aetherborn? I don't even remember saying that. Arguel's blood feast. Well, I'm not going to argue L with that. <laughs> It's so bad. I apologize for the transgressions I've committed against you. Get in there. Just gonna pass here. God, Argyle's Blood Fleece is very, very good here. Any walkers in the deck? Is that a serious question? Please, Michael. Please. Get it together, sir. No one likes it when you behave like this. Where is Mike? Maybe he's at your mom's house. Did you ever think about that? Actually, McGimp's name is Mike, so... It's weird, but I'm kind of into it. Alright, well, that's funny. What if I did just do that? I just call everyone in the chat Mike. Alright, I'm just going to play this guy. I don't know what could possibly happen. Probably some sort of exiling, but... Well, you can't really play around that, so... 
I guess we can wait till turn hmm, nine, assuming we draw uh, four more lands. It would actually be turn eleven, but so long, Scarab God, to the cart, to the to the never don't they never don't have it. It's okay. They're only at twelve. They're basically dead. Never didn't have it. Why aren't you casting this? I don't understand. Huh. I wish they played more creatures at this point. I also wish Muldrotha had Flash. Is that a is that an unreasonable request? EOT Muldrotha. Oh, look at that guy. Isn't that cute? I feel like I just want a Memorial Genius here, but I really don't want to go to five lands. Ooh, Scarab God in the graveyard? Fascinating. All keywords except Shroud. Wow, including... Uh, including Hexproof, huh? That's fascinating. That's where they kill their own champion. No, he mustn't die. Oh, he's gone. Well, that was a good draw. Let's do that. I do like a good horsemanship. I mean, if you want to go by life totals alone, we're winning this game 100%. Wow, they tap there, tapping that mana real fast. The Scrabble God, huh? Yep, this is all very good. This is like the perfect turn. Because now they get to get back Gonti. And, uh, you know, it's real annoying for everyone. Oh, wow, they didn't get back Gonti in response? Holy smokes! Yes you in the graveyard oh I see wow 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 how did we manage that I don't understand how that happened isn't that the whole point of keeping the, the, the like having the extra four mana up I still feel like we're way too far behind we have no card advantage here sure <laughs> knock yourself out Hooray! 
two, three. Put you in the graveyard. Flip you. Draw a card. Another search. Sacrifice to kill you. Scarab gods are leaving. Man, this has been a long one. For some reason, these matches have taken longer. I'm not sure why. Maybe it's because we were just lollygagging the whole time. Torrential Gear Hulk in the graveyard. Well, that's unfortunate. That guy's coming out next turn, I would I would presume. Uh, we'll go blue, black. This one. Alright, we'll take that. <laughs> All the Vraska's contempts. You got a counterspell this time? Torrential Gear Hulk and Negate? Oh boy, that's brutal. I don't think we can actually beat that. Oh, they just committed it. Sure. Yeah, I'm going to scoop here. We're way far, way too far behind. I feel like we brought our cards. We brought the correct things in. Um. Does it steal with anything they have? Torrential Gear Hulk, I guess. I think our I think our deck is in the correct configuration. I don't think Fatal Push is good. I don't think Cast Down is good. Punisher is kind of meh. Brontodon's fine, but actually, it might be Brontodon instead. Actually, it might be Hostage Taker instead. That seems better. And Walking Bliss is kind of meh, so. Toronto does deal with blood fast, but I mean, getting double green, I feel like the damage is already done. I want to do this now because they could just have negate. I don't know. I mean, only doom fall. Scarab got scarab chupacabra glint sleeve siphoner. Okay, well, yep. Swamp and oh, Argyle's blood fast. Interesting. All right. Well, here's hoping for a land. What up, Kerwit? Look at this little guy. Aether Hub and Siphoner. Land off the top, please. Cool. Wow, seriously? That was the one card you drew? Seems good. Just 
It's gotta be Gonti here, right? Are you super jazzed, Cigaretta for E3? I, I was. I mean, no longer since it's over, but... These are louder because they're in a plastic bag, whereas the raisins are all in a paper can container. That is where the raisins win over the craisins. Uh, E3's not over, but the relevant part for me is over. This is where they draw in response. I'll draw two cards in response. Just in case the best cards were on the tippity top. Looks like they might not have been though. Hey, hey, hey. I feel like you're just driving a stupid copper here. Bloodfest also feels uh, very good for this deck. I would see putting a Bloodfest in here. We did not win the last game, correct? Sure. This guy's gone. You know, I think we draw more lands for having 25 in the deck. I feel like we shouldn't be actually whiffing on 5th and 6th lands, but... Jesus. Never ends. Three e-books. Kerwood, thank you so much, man. Really appreciate it. Oh, we hit a land, but it's too late. So, one down. <laughs> the problem is, like, any turn where, like, we don't do anything and we don't have any pressure on them, they just get to draw three cards. They take six, but <laughs> going to nine is not a big deal when we have no pressure on board. The fact that we have no pressure is why they're able to draw six, so. Yep, there's the second one. And they still get to draw one anyway. That's pretty good. Ugh, Oh, boy. So they immediately bring back Ravenous Chupacabra, they kill this, they attack for 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yeah, we're basically just dead. Really? What's wrong with the Invocation Art? The Invocation Art seems great. It's super cool art. I guess we can get a Gonti back? And then they still Chupacabra it? But maybe that gives us... I don't think we're winning this game by any stretch of the imagination. I just feel like our deck isn't really trying to do any specific thing is really the problem right now. Like, we have a bunch of cool cards in the deck, but we're not actually... doing anything better than any other decks right now. Uh, perfect. And this is good, but again, they just reanimate Chupacabra, kill our guy, and attack for nine. And they get to draw an extra card from the Glint Sleeve Siphoner. And we get to kill this guy, but they still have four, five, six, seven, eight power on board. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I'm not a big fan of the invocation uh, templating. Yep, this is exactly what we said. It's almost like they're it's almost like they're watching the stream. And they did turn upkeep to get that extra point in there, so that's like 10, and we go to 4 instead of 5. This is too realistic for you? 
I can see that. Show the preview pane. Yeah, that art's cool, man. I don't know. I like that a lot. It's, like, terrifying. <laughs> Yeah, even if we exile this guy, we take four, five, six, seven, eight, and that's like basically, I guess we have a blocker, but they have three cards in hand, so they get to go to four cards, and they get to go five cards, six cards, seven cards to try to hit like one fatal push. Or they can go to six cards and try to hit a three mana removal spell like never returns, so. Oh. Four, five, six, seven, eight, so we go to eight. Yep, that's not going to do it. All right. So unfortunately... Uh, not the not the best record, not the best record we were we were going for here, but um, I don't know. I like Muldrotha and I like Vraska, but I think this is too heavily skewed towards black. I feel like we want to be more in the middle, more Sultai ish. Um, and I didn't want to. I honestly, I felt weird making too many changes to this because Josh had great reasons for a lot of the cards in the deck, but I don't know if I agree with the cards themselves, right? Like, they're, Walking Bliss is great getting them in the graveyard and then playing it off of Muldrotha, but that's really idealistic because that requires a lot of mana. And in the early game, like, I, I just don't think Walking Bliss is that impactful as... as it's, I don't think it's as impactful as it used to be. Um, I also think Memorial Genius is pretty cute. Like, obviously, you want to get it back with Muldrotha again and draw two more cards, but that's a little cute. Memorial to Folly is pretty cute, but I think one of the problems is that we had a lot of lands that come into play tapped. So we actually don't have that many um, like basics and lands that would let the uh, these come into play untapped. So theoretically, let's say we don't have the correct land for it. The lands that are coming into play tapped are around 13. That's a good amount. Oh, and Fetid Pools are always coming into play tapped, so 15. That's a, that's a good amount. Um, and then, like, if no dead lands were taking damage off, a Field of Ruin is never going to be a colored land, so that's rough. Um, yeah, and I mean, Woodland and Drowned Catacombs, it's very possible. We have seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven lands that, that let Drowned Catacomb kind of play untapped, and seven lands that make Wooded, wooded Foothills, Wooded Cemetery come in. So seven, seven lands that, that let these come into play untapped, but that's not a lot. That's not a tremendous amount. So you have to have one of seven, and then any of these, or the Evolving Wilds. Which, again, comes into play tap. So the mana base is a little bit awkward. Personally, I would just cut the Evolving Wilds, but you want it because of Maldrotha, but I don't think the payoff is that great. I think Maldrotha is at its best when it's getting back Planeswalkers or, um, you know, sick creatures like Gifted Aether Morn. Uh, less expensive creatures so that on turn 8 or something, you can play a Maldrotha in a 2-drop, like a Glintsleaf Siphoner or something. Um, Glintsleaf Siphoner, also a card I think is very good because you can... Uh, if it dies to, like, Chain Waller or something, you can just get it back in the late game for a uh, minimal cost and, you know, maybe draw some cards. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I think the deck is sweet, but it definitely needs some work. I think there's something with Muldrotha. I think there's there's got to be something cool because it's a very powerful card. And 6-6 six, six is a very, very sizable body in this format. But, um, yeah, I don't think we're there yet. I don't think we're there yet, but... Yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Really appreciate it. If you guys want to have your deck played by me and critiqued and what have you, do let me know. You can check out my Twitch profile and uh, link is in the description along with my Patreon page. And uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Really appreciate the support and I'll see you next time.